Test something real quick. Just want to test something. Okay. All right, tested. <laughs> um, yeah, now welcome to the stream. If anyone is watching as of current, this is a uh, part two. <laughs> Technically, part two. To um the last stream of just reading Kiki's delivery service. Once again, I'll do the same where I'll wait for people to actually join and yada yada. You get the idea. So, you know, we're just doing kind of exactly what I said. Streaming, reading. It's a bit loud, the music for me, but I think it has to be if... I want you guys to be able to hear it at all. Fortunately, so... It is what it is. No one's watched yet. So I shall wait. Having at least, like one <laughs> one viewer that would be that would be pretty pog that would be the big poggers I don't want to send it in the general of my discord because I feel like something a bit more important was going on there <laughs> than me streaming a book but someone joined so that's pretty cool uh, hello to whoever to whoever joined uh, also, just in case, if anyone did miss the uh, last stream yesterday, which perfectly fine if you did, um, I'll explain what happened in the first part of the book. It's not really plot heavy, <laughs> it is, but it's like, it's not as, um, you know, it's not as serious, so it can kind of just be summed up, I'd say, pretty quickly. Uh, I don't think anyone's watching currently. Hopefully the music works. That's all I really care for. If the music works, then we're all good. Alright, let me see. Maybe there's a way to get people get people to watch <laughs> they're just a bit more boring if no one's there I think that's fair to say this music is great though I'll put it in general with the boys this quick all right so I guess I'll just wait. Just wait for a minute. If no one joins after, like, two or three, I'm just gonna start. <laughs> I think that's fair. Well, one person's been watching. Thanks to this one person. That might be me. <laughs> I hope it's not me. I'm watching my own stream. But, um, just say hello if you're here. Because it probably is just me then, isn't it? Yeah, it probably is. Oh well. Uh, I guess I'll put it in. Serious discussion. 
we're gonna be confused, but ah, what can I do? Having one viewer is very poggers. Waiting. Fucking Arthur. I can't complain. This music's a bop. So I can wait forever. Don't know why I put on a American accent for that, but actually, here's the thing. Can you go out hear me even? I hope so. And I hope I'm not like overbearingly loud or something. That wouldn't be fun. Someone is watching now, apparently. But oh no, maybe they're not. I don't know. This confuses me too much. Ugh. How can I advertise my stream midstream? That is the question. I think that is on everyone's mind. I just want to read the book, man. Dun, 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 dun. Bow, bing, bow. Actually, special thanks to this one. This, this one? This one making this video just the music is, is great maybe someone is watching this not saying anything because apparently someone is What do you think? I'm gonna ask my Discord. Actually, no. I guess people just aren't that interested in me reading. They're more interested in Minecraft. <laughs> Which is fair. Which is very fair. How am I going to, should I wait, I guess, that is the question. This is going to be really annoying for people watching it on uh, playback, unfortunately. So what I'll probably do is I'll, um, I'll cut it so that it just starts whenever I start reading because this is not the part people like. Is that maybe people are in chat and it's just broken. It would be a very sad statement if it isn't broken. Maybe I shouldn't look at a video on this actually, that usually messes up the stream. This time is playing audio. Someone's watching it, apparently. And it isn't me this time. Intense waiting. Don't you love it? Kiki says I really service. There's just like one person watching and I don't even know what it is. How long has this... If it reaches 10 minutes, man, I'm just gonna have to start because... You know. You know, you know. Now let me test my audio. Be a loop for a second. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I'm just gonna have to start. Sorry. 
guess it's actually dice time. Page 30. Oh, wait, no. I'm just gonna read through. Oh, no, wait, I got to page 32, I think. Just when they arrived in the little seaside town. This is so sad. Just be sitting in a stream talking to myself. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to start reading. All right, yep. It's hit the 10 minute mark, 11 minutes specifically. I have to start reading or else this is gonna be a very depressing stream. The bum. But I'm bow bow and something happened. My internet died, please not. An error? What? Don't tell me my stream died. Hi, Ed, can you see this? Can you actually see the stream? Please say you can see the stream. Can you see? Oh, okay, good. Can you hear me? Can you see? Okay, yeah, no, we can. All right, we're fine. Let's just continue. Uh, literally just then was when I was gonna start. No one was joined the stream, so I kind of wanted to wait for people. But um, I guess I should just start, shouldn't I? <laughs> so this is where we left off yesterday. Uh, for the people who aren't here, which is just you, I guess, Derp. Uh, basically, the plot so far is your one Kiki, <laughs> who is the main character, just turned 13, meaning she has to go off and live on her own as a witch. It's this kind of thing they call coming of age in um, Kiki's Delivery Service, where her parents decided, like, oh, they're going to raise her as a witch. And, yeah, she just has to go live with her cat now and figure out what the hell she has to do. It's basically Pokemon, but... Kiki's Delivery Service edition, where when you turn up a certain age, you have to go live by yourself and master the how to catch animals and balls. Yep. All right, let's just, let's just start. Uh, where did I start, actually? Where did I end off yesterday? Oh, yeah, no, I know. All right. This is going to sound completely, like, just random where it starts, but um, this is the first line. Let's check it out, Kiki sped ahead on her broom. When they are closer, she realized the town was even bigger than she thought. Oh yeah, I should say. They found they found a town to go live in. So yeah, there you go. That's all the context you need. Um, tall buildings, boats box-shaped and triangular, jutted towards the sky. There's few people watching now. Damn it, should I... <laughs> now that three, should I mention that what was happening before? Uh, basically, you're one Kiki. I'm going to say it all again. Kiki uh, is just, like turn 13 meaning she gets to choose whether she wants to be a witch or just a regular person she chose being a witch meaning she has to go off and find a town to be the town's witch by herself with her cat Gigi and she's just left her parents to go do that done all right um they just found a town now currently uh let's check it out Kiki sped ahead on our room when they are closer she realized the town was even bigger than she had thought um, tall buildings, both box-shaped and triangular, jutted towards the sky. Kiki took a sweeping look around and exclaimed, This is the place. What, you don't think it's too big? Gigi seemed a little worried. Uh, remember what Kokiri said, Kokiri being her father, um, to think twice about big, busy towns. I like it here. Look, you can see over there. Um, she pointed at a clock tower near the center of the town. A tower so uh, tall it seemed, to, it seemed like a ladder to the heavens. Wouldn't it be fun to grab the top and twirl this like a spinning top? 
The shadow stretches so far, like the whole uh, town is a sundial. Kiki peered down with starry eyes. You seem awfully excited, Gigi said, but there could be a witch already living here, like the other town before. Well, we don't know that until we land, I guess. Uh, Kiki sharply angled her broomstick down and landed on the town's roads. This is actually exactly where we left off yesterday. Um, on the ground, the streets were bustling with afternoon shoppers. Uh, when Kiki jumped on the cobblestone with a thud, everyone was startled. People seemed uh, scared and fled, but others hid behind something else. Soon Kiki was surrounded by a wall of people. She hurried, took the broom out from between her legs, placed Gigi on her shoulder, and on a cheerful smile. Um, I'm Kiki. I'm a witch. Oh, a witch, huh? And one older woman said. You're a rare breed these days. The woman... Wait, what? <laughs> words. The woman adjusted her glasses on her nose and stared. So there is no witch in this town. Phew. <laughs> That's all I was saying. I'm Kiki the witch and this is my black cat Gigi. I'll make myself at home, she said as she looked around at everyone and then courtesied more carefully than usual. Make yourself at home? You mean here in the town of Kokori. What co- That's like the father's name. This is Koriko. Never mind. A man chimed in. Who made that decision? A woman exclaimed. What is that new mare? Well, what is that the new mayor, they said. At this point, everyone was exchanging glances with people next to them and chatting among themselves. Is there anything good about having a witch around? Isn't it kind of strange to go flying about the sky at this day? Page. Turning page. Here, wait. Get here the turning page noises. There you go. Beautiful. They say there used to be one here a long time ago, but we've been fine without one all this time. Mummy, witches use magic, right? Seems cool. They do outrageous things. You should be scared. Do you have some wicked plot? Oh, they're kind of witch racist around here. <laughs> that wasn't in the book. That's just something I said. Don't worry. Um, as Kiki listened to all the comments, which she couldn't really be called kind, which couldn't really be called oh yeah, which couldn't really be called kind, her chest tightened. Even so, she tried to be confident. Smile, smile. She thought. She needed to come up with a reply. I'd love to live in this town. It's pretty, and I like the clock tower. Kiki complimented them. Well, it's great that you've taken a liking to the town, but... But we don't want any trouble. Whatever floats your boat. Once everyone was satisfied, having had their say, they scattered everywhere which way and disappeared back into the town. So they basically just said, Kiki can't live here. How nice. Uh, all Kiki's energy had disappeared, leaving her discouraged. When they had heard that the city didn't have a witch, she hoped the townspeople would find her interesting and welcome her. But now the exhaustion from flying since morning and an empty stomach, and she had felt uh, sinking into a pit. Oh, it hit her, and she felt like she was sinking into a pit. See, I know how to read, I promise. The people from Kiki's hometown were happy to live near a witch. Uh, they valued her family and even said things like, Witches are like oil for your gears, and having a witch around brings life to the town. Every day, someone was stopping by, offering something tasty, saying, I just have a little extra. And naturally, Kiki and her family gave back. They shared, shared Kokori's smooth medicine. Oh, wait, what? This is what happened to in the stream. What happened to in the stream? I saw something weird. Um, taught the townspeople the names of traditional herbs, played Cat's Cradle with the elderly folk who lived home, and delivered lost and forgotten items by Brim. It was a give and take lifestyle, just as Kokori said. That's how it, well, that was how it had been ever since Kiki was born. So, this whatever floats your boat attitude was strange. After all, Kiki knew this town, and she had just come of age. How was she supposed to float her boat? Kiki moved to the side of the road and trudged along sadly, dragging her broom. It's just like Kokori said, big towns are no good. Gigi murmured into her ear where he was still perched on her shoulder. Kiki nodded slowly as tears wouldn't overflow. Uh, what should we do? She whispered, petting Gigi. Things will work out somehow. He flicked his tail back and forth with extra energy. It was almost night time. Kiki had still plenty of food from Kokiri left, but she wasn't sure what to do about a place to sleep, even if she had any money for an inn. Was there a place in town that she'd let, that would let her stay? Her confidence shattered. Kiki sh shamelessly roamed the streets. Uh, oh, crap. That. I keep seeing this and thinking my stream's crashed, but it's just me being stupid. Psh. GG. <laughs> yeah, that's literally a noise. Psh. I can't. There, that's probably it, right? PSH, yeah. Gigi abruptly shouted, um, trying to cheer Kiki up. Witches have got so wimpy. In the olden days, everyone in this place would have had their watch to their backs. 
an old school w witch would have picked the whole town up by the clock tower and struck it to the mountain somewhere. Kiki shrugged slightly and said nothing. She wasn't sure where they were going, but uh, after wandering for a while, they found themselves on a narrow street. Instead of tall buildings, it lined with little houses that seemed to lean over the road. At some point, the sun set, and the shops on either side had closed their doors. From the clinking of dishes and laughter that echoed on each side of the windows, it sounded like dinner time. Suddenly, she heard a woman's high-pitched voice coming from inside a half-closed bakery. Oh goodness, the lady he forgot something awfully important. Dear, go and get this for her. Why don't you? Kiki thought perhaps this woman was talking to her, but uh, was talking to her and stopped. But soon after, she heard the man's voice. The man's voice. Awfully important. What are you fussing about? It's just a baby's pacifier. It's not as if she had forgot the baby. I've got together tonight. I'll be running this over this morning. Um. But I'm telling you, that's not good enough. She'll g she's a very good customer. She comes from so far away, with her baby in her toe, to buy our rolls. You say it's just a pacifier, but to a baby it's so important. As important as your pipe to you. The poor old thing won't be able to sleep all night if you're not going. Um, then I will. Where? Where's the words? How have I lost where I was reading? This happens a lot. I'm not big brain. Um... The woman, who must have been the owner of the town bakery, came out from behind the door. The man shouted at her, Hey, you can't just do that. Cross the river in the, your condition? Kiki saw the woman who had a huge tummy, like a baby might have been bored any mom moment. The woman with her minute, it doesn't matter. Uh, a rubber pacifier was clenched in her hand. More page turning noises. Uh, turning around, the woman calls. Then are you going for me? Uh, tomorrow I will, the man replied. Hmm. She stuck her chin out. You're going to be a father soon yourself. I can't believe my baby will have such a grump for dad. After shouting at him, she gathered her uh, protruding, that's an interesting word, belly in her hands and set off walking. Her shoulders swaying back and forth and her breath came roughly. Without thinking, Kiki called after her. Excuse me, if you don't mind me going, I'll deliver it for you. Page churning is ASMR. It is ASMR. I agree, it's the nicest sound. Flickery, so um, Kiki's just kind of kind of put into their life and deliver it for her. I, I get, I get it, I get it. Free bread, why not? Um, excuse me, if you don't mind me going, I'll deliver it for you. The woman turned around and backed up a couple of steps. Then she gave Kiki a quick look, head to toe. You're such a long lady, but why are you wearing black clothes and carrying a broom? Are you a chimney sweep? <laughs> no, actually, I just came to this town and I'm a witch. Kiki said nervously. The lady ran her eyes over Kiki again. You don't say, wow. A witch, huh? I've never heard of them being... Uh, of, I've never heard about them before, but it's my first time seeing one. She heaved a sigh. But are you pulling my leg? You must have from the fear troop or something, right? Kiki hurriedly shook her head. No, I'm really a witch, so if you need something delivered, I can do it easy peasy. Please, let me help you, she offered politely. A real witch, you say? Well, delivering it will be a real trip. Is that all right with you? Um, I keep losing where I was reading. <laughs> I'm not used to reading on the stream. This is new for me. Um, sure, if you don't mind going any distance. Although is it, although if it's too far north, it's not up by the North Pole, is it? My dress isn't very warm. I don't have a cape. The lady burst out laughing. I think you will do. No, I think I like you, so you'll do it then. Yes, of course. Kiki smiled and nodded. Then she suddenly grew worried. Um, oh, ma'am? Ah, don't ma'am me. The lady put her palms up to word off the familiarity. I'm a baker and my name's Ozano. Is that Osino or Ozano? I, Japanese names just be like that. Then, uh, Miss Ozano. I'm just gonna call it Ozano. Um, I'm going to fly over. Is that alright? Now you're going over the top. You don't need to take an airplane. No, I'm going to take my broom. What? Ozano cocked her head and walked to her and worked her mouth and then closed it until she finally uttered. This sure is a strange day. Then she shook her head and clearly said, You can be a witch or a scarecrow. What? Page turning noises. Lovely. Wait, what did it say? You can fly or swim. It's all fine by me. I don't like to make things too complica bleh, complicated. Complicated. I don't like to make things too complicated. Uh, what's important right now is delivering this pacifier. Hearing you say that puts me at ease. Kiki grinned. Gigi waved his tail charmingly from her shoulder. If that's the case, then let's just get this done as soon as we can, Osino said, digging around in the pocket of her apron. 
I'll draw you a map. Also, it's not that I don't trust you, but once you've delivered it, uh, have the mother's, have the baby's mother write back her name this. When you bring it back, I'll be waiting with something for you. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> when did I say thank you? Like I was actually thanking someone. I went, thank you, even though it's what they said. I don't need to question myself. Wonderful, Kiki shouted. Then she took the map in her pacifier and mounted her broom, kicked off the ground and climbed into the sky. You really are a witch, huh? Kiki heard Ozano's surprised voice as she backed away as she flew. When Kiki arrived with the pacifier, the baby was wailing, but once her mother popped the pacifier in, he smiled. The baby's mother was very appreciative. That's an appreciating baby right there. <laughs> and signed the map at Kiki's request. You really helped me out, she said. And thankful, and thankful Kiki ran over and over. Uh, Kiki felt incredible as she flew back to the bakery, and hearing that she had really helped uh, breathed new hope into her discouraged heart. You know, she told Gigi, I'm feeling alright, so you can feel better too. Sorry if that was loud, I hit my mic there. Oh, uh, quick question, is my audio okay? Just before we continue. Or am I talking too fast, or what? Not any critique, if you're still there, <laughs> actually. You might be You're probably just doing something and have this on the background, I'm guessing. It's not much to look at, really. I could put this on, but then I wouldn't be able to see your comments. It's good. <laughs> not the, uh, I mean, like, the audio. Is the audio okay? I know the book's good. Maybe that's what you meant, actually. Yeah, the audio should be fine. Uh... Do you have a clue what's going on? Am I speaking too fast? Is everything G? Hopefully so. That's the film, by the way. If you're wondering what this was. That's what the film looked like, but it has music over it. I guess I'll just continue. Make sure there's still people watching. I think people watching this important. And um, let's just continue, yeah. Uh, you know, I'm feeling... Well, that's not it. <laughs> you know, she told Gigi, I'm feeling all right, so you can feel better too. Hmm, he sniffled. Geez, I'm starving all of a sudden. Me too. Kiki reached out and patted Gigi's stomach as they continued on our broom. Once this errand is done, let's go find a treat so up and eat lunch and unpacked for us. But only a little. We have to make it last. I'm glad the moon is shining so bright tonight. Also know the baker was still standing in the same place. And that's patience right for you. A uh, place Kiki left for. Looking up the sky with her mouth hanging open. Once Kiki quietly landed, Ozano blant blurted. Blunted. That's a funner word. I'm going to use blunted instead of blurred anymore. Flying really handy, huh? Will you please teach me how? Um, that's impossible. You don't have witch blood in you, so you won't be able to fly. Uh oh, Ozano said disappointingly. But we don't know for sure that I don't. What do you think? Do I have witch blood? Or do I look part witch? She let her belly go and then spread her arms and flapped them like a bird's wing. Kiki looked away and laughed a little. As I thought, it seems you're not a witch. As you thought? How can you tell? I just can, I suppose. Well, that's not fun. But you're right. It's probably impossible. I have never heard anything about grandma or any great grandmas be grandmas? grandmothers being witches. Anyway, how was the baby? Kiki handed her map with her mother's signature. He was crying, but he cheered up right away. It made me happy, too. That's great. Okay, then, Miss Witch. I need to thank you. Please call me Kiki, and don't need and I don't need anything in return. I'm happy to have met someone so nice. That's more than enough. Like I said, I just arrived in town. My, how humble, Osuna said. This feels like Animal Crossing, the book. Just go do an errand for someone, and then have, like, a bit of nice chit-chat. Uh... <laughs> Well, I'm so sorry. The only thing I have... No, I bleh, words. Well, I'm sorry. I only have the things that I sell today. But, um... She handed Kiki a bag holding five butter rolls. Oh, these look so delicious. I'm happy to take them. Kiki said breathlessly. I just, then she gave a politeful courtesy and turned to go. Hey, Miss Witch, your name is Kiki, you said. you just gone to town, right? Where are you staying? Kiki turned around, cuddling Gigi and lowered her eyes. Surely you have somewhere to stay, Oh Snow demanded. Oh, wow. Kiki remained silent. What? You have to speak up about these things like that. In case, use the second floor of our flower house. It's small, but it has a bed and it's running water. 
Really? He <laughs> shouted, squeezing Gigi without thinking. If you don't like it, you can look for a better place tomorrow. Oh, I definitely won't do that. Thank you so much, but you are sure it's alright. I'm a witch, and it seems all kinds of people in this town don't like us very much. Kiki hung her head up, but Elsino took her chin and into her hand, brought her head up, and gave her a wink. I've taken a shine to you, don't worry. Plus, I think there's something a little wonderful about having a witch stay at our place. They could, like, completely advertise their shop by saying there's a witch living in it. I feel like that would work. Uh, the flower house, which was next to the bakery, really was a flower storehouse, and it seemed completely coated in white powder. Wait, did I skip a page? No, I didn't. Um, well, yeah, wait, page ASMR. Sorry, I forgot to do that when I was looking up. After Kiki and Gigi relaxed and ate some of their food, they crawled into bed, exhausted. I might be a white cat by tomorrow. Gigi looked at himself over and sneezed. But look, Gigi, there's a bay window and you'll be able to get a lot of sun, just like you wanted. After such a long trip, Kiki was relieved that her coming of age day was finally drawing two good clothes. Hey, Kiki, uh, should we look for a different town tomorrow? Gigi asked. I think I'm gonna stay here a little longer. I wasn't exactly welcome today as I had hoped. But the baby, the ba- the baber? The baker. Words, my friend. Words. Check in who many, how many people are watching. I think it's just you, Derp. Um, uh, where was I? I think I'm gonna stay here a little longer. I wasn't exactly welcomed as I'd hoped, but the baker seems to like me, right? There might be another person who does too, don't you think? Well, yeah, there might even be three, as quickly as Gigi answered. He had soon snore. he was soon snoring on their breaths, and the even breaths of sleep. Wait, what? He was soon snoring the even breaths of sleep. That's a nice sense. That is actually the, uh, the chapter over. They were like completely depressed and for half that chapter. To find them. The next chapter is called Kiki's Open Shop. Or Kiki Opens a Shop. Should I continue reading? Or do you think that's enough for a stream? I should probably continue reading, right? I feel like ending it there would be. Uh. <laughs> bland. I don't know. Not enough. Either way. I shall wait for thy reply, if you're there. I guess I should, like, I feel like you kind of zoned out there. You're just probably doing something completely different in the background. So, if I say your name, you probably will, I'm guessing you will, snap back to reality. Derp. And he left. Okay, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I guess I I don't know if I should end it there then. Since no one is watching. Oh well. Um I might end it there. Very short. But I don't think I'm gonna be as lucky to get more people to watch the stream. It's a very specific thing, so I really don't mind that. Oh, you're still here? Said there's no one watching. What? Oh, wow. That is a glitch, my friend. That is a glitch. What? Wait a minute. I'm trying to drag this up. Just... There you go. Okay, I'll continue. Um, yeah, I'll continue in a second. I'm just doing something. Yeah, I'm being called. Wow. I've been the whole time. Wait, one second. Am I alright? Am I alright? I've returned. <laughs> Sorry, mom was just asking me a question.
All right, shall we continue? Should we continue? That is up to you, Derp. Is this a good time to end it, or just should I just continue? Because we've got an entire chapter to go and complete, I guess. Oh, we should continue. All right, then. I guess we will. We are 47 pages into the book now. It's quite a short book. It's only about 200-ish. Uh, not even, actually. It's like 189. So we're pretty far, technically. All right, I'm going to start now in three, two, one. Uh, three days have passed since Kiki the Witch had moved to town of Kokori. Of Koriko. There we go. I'm actually 900 years old. Oh, wow. Hello, Color Hacker. <laughs> I don't know who... That was a very nice um, introduction there. Welcome, person who is 300 years old. Hopefully, stream doesn't look like death to you. How are you, I shall say. How are you? I'll say it in chat, too. Um... I like the way that derps even in the stream, but it doesn't think he is for some reason. Who is Color Hacker? That is the question we all ask ourselves daily. Uh, I'll actually, I'll see. I'll go on the stream and I'll see if I recognize. Nope, I don't. Are you new to the channel? Did you just join this because of Kiki's Delivery Services? Oh, you know who Color Hacker is. Who is it? Is it like one of your friends, maybe? I don't know how this works. Either way, thank you for joining the stream. Having at least some people here is nice. It's always nice. Uh, just, I guess since you're here now, I should explain what, what Kiki's Delivery Service is. You probably know, actually. But, um, it's just a book and also, oh, he's Funny Entertainment. Oh, nice. All right. Welcome. I didn't think that was his name now, but I guess I must have changed it. Thank you for joining the stream. Uh, I guess we'll just continue then since you probably heard stuff since I'm pretty sure. Are you siblings or something? I don't know. Who's Funny Entertainment? You are, I think. All right, I'm going to continue. Um... Three days have passed since Kiki the witch had moved into town of Koriko. Taking full advantage of Osano's offer to stay as long as she liked, Kiki holed up in, hold up in the... What? Kiki hold up in the flower house. She... Oh, words. You are. You're right next to me, lol. <laughs> oh, so, uh, yeah, no, I'm guessing then that, that he knows what's going on. Plot-wise. Um... You know, Kiki holed up in the flower house. She sat in a daze at the edge of the bed, sometimes eating bits of leftover lunch from her mother or the bread from most of them, even though she didn't have much of an appetite. As if her nerves were contagious, Gigi was glued to her side. Today, Kiki needed to go out and buy food, but she couldn't get herself to leave her room. Oh, I feel bad. Not wanting to leave. Uh, the unending... Wait, page turn. There you go clamor of the city and the sight of the busy people hurrying past her window scared her. Everything in this town seemed to operate in its mechanical way. The night she delivered the pacifier, she had regained a bit of confidence, but by the next day, those feelings had completely vanished. That's rough, man. All mornings, Kiki had repeated her half-hard excuses in her head. Well, because I just, I mean, she could stay in her house, or she could stay in the town and pretend to be human, or if she swallowed her pride, she could even go home. But then I'll just be like a snail stuck in my own shell my whole life. Apologies to snails, but I don't want to be like that. I'm not. Oh, I'm not funny entertainment. I'm chicken with barbecue sauce. I believe you. This is tough. Mm. But Kiki did just kind of, like, attack, personally attack snails there. So, I no longer like Kiki as a character. Um, <laughs> Kokiri's broom stood in the corner of her room, and Kiki stared at it with one hand on her chest. Uh, this is no good. I need to find a job I can do. It's just like Mum said. In a big city, everyone is busy, and here I am in the middle of one. I live in the past fire. Maybe I can do more tasks like that. I'm good at flying, and there's lots of errands people who don't have the time to run 
Oh, wait, no, there's lots of... I'm gonna fly. Let me read that again. I messed it up. Oh, you're just talking in chat anyway. Snails are adorable. Yeah, I agree. Hello, chicken nugget. Oh, the best entertainment is... Wait. I'm confused now. <laughs> you're both best entertainment, are you? I, I honestly can't tell. I am a big city. Everyone is busy. The truest thing I've ever heard. Oh, in a big city, you probably meant. Yes. That is, that is just straight up facts. I live in a town, so I don't really, I'm not exposed to that that much, but, um, you know, she kind of attacked snails there. Maybe I can do more tasks like that. I'm good at flying, and there are lots of people who don't have the time to run little errands. He's Color Hacker. Oh. I don't know who's who. I'm just going to call Color Hacker, Color Hacker. Um, as she thought about this, Kiki started to perk up. So when Osano came to check on her, she asked for advice on her new idea. Deliver things? You mean like a transportation service? Also no asked, not quite understanding. Uh, yes, but the things I transport won't be big enough to carry, or to call cargo. Cargo? Cargo. Just like a little things, sort of casual. Like, you know, people could ask me for favors the same way they ask their neighbor. Hmm, that could be something. Come to think of it, that would help me out a lot. Once the baby is born, it will be hard for me to run every quick errand. Yeah, I think this will be good. Call me chicken. What? I keep reading chat and it just goes in with the book. So it's like, I say that and I'm like, call me chicken. Hmm. Man. I love the art of Kiki's delivery service. I'm gonna put that up there. I think this is nice to have. There's four people watching. Why is there four people watching? Hello to four people. Uh, <laughs> still streaming. Uh, you're not gonna have a clue what's going on unless you know what Kiki's delivery service is. Uh, but I'm just going to continue, if that's okay, unless you want me to explain or elaborate, per se. I don't know who the fourth person who joined is, but it's probably just another version of the best entertainment or color hacker, isn't it? Um, you know, I'll read that again. I think this will be good, else no lean closer, but for such small things, it will be difficult to set prices. What's your plan? Oh, just a little favor, no, just a little of whatever people have is fine. What do you mean? Sharing whatever you have, that's how we get at, get by as witches. We make ourselves useful to people uh, with whatever skill we have. Oh, let me chat. Well, you know my name is Chicken, so just call me that. True. I will just call you that. Double check on. Still four people watching. Wow. I don't think that's that. I think it's just two people. But um, they have lots of different accounts, so. Um, where was I? We make ourselves useful to people with whatever skills we have. Um, in return, people share what they have with us. It's called... No, it's what you call give and take. Without realizing it, kicking was starting to sound like cookery. Oh, now that you mention it, Elspil said, I've heard of that before, but that won't be enough. What? It will. We just don't need much. Uh, you can see how... F f page turn? Witches are supposed to be evil. Yeah, but not this witch, or these witches. They're meant to be... This is like set in like the 80s I think maybe I don't actually know this is sad but like witches have pretty much died out and there's only a few of them now they're just like regular people uh, Kiki actually doesn't really have any powers you can just fly in a broom and can talk to her cat that's about it uh like flipped over it will wait no, it will witches don't need much you can see how page flip ASMR noises uh, simply my clothes are, and I don't eat a lot of food. My plan is just to accept that if I don't have something, I probably don't need it. Ah, good witches. I never thought I'd see the day. Yeah. Does, does this character look evil? They'll ask the cat, but you get the idea. Because you'd be correct. Um, Kiki is very evil. He's actually a mass murderer. Um... Simple my clothes are, and I don't eat a lot. My plan is just to accept if I don't have something, I probably don't need it. So that's how you'll make this work? Oh, Snow nodded, impressed. Then you'll need a storefront, huh? Uh, yes, something small. Even just a sign that says courier or something. How about there? The first floor of flower of the... Bleh, the first floor of the flower house, Olsen offered. I can organize our things in the corner. That was a joke, Derp, don't worry. <laughs> um, what, are you sure? Well, it might be too small, but it's, start, it's a small start to the business. Then you'll have the fun of watching your business grow. This has turned into a, um, a TED talk. 
freaking out your business deals and so and such. Elsino seemed so excited. It was almost as if she were opening the shop. Once you've decided, it's best to go right away. But courier might not be the best name. Sounds too much like warrior. I think you can just call it delivery service. I've heard that before. Something like speedy home deliveries. <laughs> because you deliver like um because you deliver right to people's homes in a timely fashion. Also, since you're the ones do, uh, doing the service, you should add your name to it. Kiki's Delivery Service. That's the name of the book! They should name the shop the name of the book, guys. Imagine that. Ooh, that's like a little mountain there. See that? Um, yeah. If they said the name of the book, it makes me very happy. Uh, you should add your name to it. Kiki's Delivery Service. Sounds good, right? Do you think including my name is a smart idea? Don't be so modest. You have a very unique name. No, having a very unique name is the best. The best. The same name as the book. I know, it's amazing. Take a look at ours. Rock, paper, pastries. Sticks in your head. That's one trick to doing business. Also, no, I just kick in and nodded, and nodded confidently. In all, it's genius, isn't it? There's a little break here where I know you guys can't see the book, which is a shame because there's some of the art that you like see in here is very, very nice, and it's a little um, little cat breaking up the paragraphs. Um, the next day, Elsa no happily gave birth to a baby girl. Oh wow, that was quick. <laughs> okay, and um, Kiki was very busy helping with the bakery and looking after Elsa no. Does it have pictures? It, it does every once in a while, just like it covers like a full page or something. Like every 12 pages or so, it will have some pictures or some little tiny little things. They're not, there's like very few and far between. I think there's only about six in the book, but um, it's a nice touch. They move fast indeed. So um, prepping her shop was pushed off. Still, 10 days later, she was ready to open. She washed the flowery front wall and hung up, every, hung up a sign. Kiki's delivery service. I deliver anything to door to door faster than anyone else. Call 1 slash 800 Kiki Can. Kiki Can? <laughs> is that the name of. Is that, um. What does Kiki Can mean? Is Can like a Japanese thing? Or it means that 1800 Kiki Can, as in she can deliver. I don't know. Uh, the cute phone number was Osuna's idea. Kiki and Gigi kept going outside to look up at the sign. We're already open, so I guess there's no point in worrying about that now. Um, Kiki murmured to herself. That's right, Gigi did his best to encourage her. Um, now, where is that girl who was excited about coming of age? Inside, Kiki had everything she needed to run her shop, thanks to Osuno's husband. Uh, he had moved all the bags of flour into the corner and built her a desk out of bricks and boards near the entrance. Uh, I just lost where I was. He put a, a page turning noise. Look at that. ASMR. Can you hear the music, by the way? Just, you can answer that. Whatever. Yep, enter. It's fine. Reading. 50 pages in, We. This is actually the 50th page, 52nd page. Mm. Look. Pretty short. Music. Oh, <laughs> by you saying, is there music, it explains to me that you can't hear anything, I think. I think it's too quiet, maybe. Yeah, no, you might be able to hear the music. I don't know how to get that working. Don't hear any music, just ASMR page turning. Wow. <laughs> That's fair. Sorry, you're supposed this is actually music here. Uh from like the film but um i guess you can't hear it so that's not good that is not good let's be away it's fine we don't need we don't need music we got the asmr page turning huh no one it's the chat the stream <laughs> it's talking people talking in the stream Say again? You see. I see, said the blind man. Uh -huh. Oh, just they have little they have a little thing here. Little you know, I'll send it in the Discord. If you're still there. <laughs> uh there's three people watching. Hey. 
I want. I actually have a way of, of showing it. I have. I. You've gonna use my big brain here. So I am taking a picture of it, sending it to Discord. This is actually how I'm gonna show all the pictures if I want to. I guess. This is just on the page, because remember they set up a sign. Apparently, I think. I suggest a m s or surge for good ASMR. ASMR man, I don't. It just doesn't. It just doesn't work with me. Page turning might be nice actually. The that's, that's good ASMR, I think. Uh, I'm gonna put the picture in the announcements of my server. The picture that just came up. There's very little stuff like this, but they have a bit of it. I'm gonna sign into the Discord real quick. Or maybe I'm actually already. Just so I can show the people watching who, um, like people who watch this. There is Discord. Boop. Anyway, continue. I shall. Wait, what? No, that's not what I wanted. Pretty nice. Yeah. That just means I'll be able to show off um, some of the imagery. Alright, let's continue. Um, let me just close off my phone there. A uh, brand new tel red telephone on the top hung. Okay, Discord is starting. <laughs> I forgot I did that. Let's just uh, get you over that now for a minute. Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to <laughs> fix the stream while in the stream, you know? I shall continue. A uh, brand new red telephone top hung with a big map of Kokorio, or Koriko, sorry, on the wall facing it. They polish the, the pillar people would see when they first walk into the shop till it shone, and they hung up her mother's broom there. Looking at it, she thought, I'm glad I didn't bring the new thunder broom. It wouldn't ha I wouldn't have any worries about... Bleh. I wouldn't... I have... Bleh. <laughs> Words. I have enough worries without flying on a stranger. Flying on a stranger sounds weird. This isn't my server, is it? This isn't signed into me. This is a brother's. Oh, well. You're just gonna have to watch me sign into Discord. Be a better idea. Let's just scan a QR code so I don't have to sign in manually and tell everyone my email. That seems smarter. Done. Logged in. Let's go. This sounds weird and wrong. Flying on a stranger? I know. That's what I meant. Um, so no, I'll be able to show. I want to go to announcements. Here is just a image I was talking about. Anyway, that will be useful later. It does sound weird. Let's continue, man. This is a nice stream. <laughs> I like doing this. Um, it's because they call like the brooms like they refer to them. It's because oh, I don't know. <laughs> a whole week went by without a single customer. When Kiki went to visit the baby, Elsno apologized. Maybe using your name wasn't a good idea. I just had an idea of how I could get the the music working. You're probably gonna hate me for this though. There. Can you hear the music? Hopefully you can hear the music. Is that a yes or no? <laughs> Is the music too loud, actually? That's the real question. Is it, is it loud though? Is it too loud? I can turn it down a bit if it's too loud. 
No? Not too loud? Like, you should be able to hear me read over it, is what I mean. Uh, so, like, with Fair at a line. I'm glad I didn't bring that new slender broom. I have enough worries without flying on a stranger. Like, is that fine? Not too loud. Okay, fine. Um, when we when Kiki went to visit the baby, Elfno apologized. Maybe using your name wasn't a good idea. I'm sorry, this is all my fault. Word travels fast here. You can still hear me. Okay, good. Um, and apparently, some people have heard you're a witch. Unfortunately, they worry you put a spell on the packages and they'll transform and disappear. I'm sure if you hired, if um, they hired you once, they'd be hooked. If I could get you to be out, no, if I could, words, if I could be out and about, I would help you. It's all right. I'm sure people will come around soon. Kiki forced a smile, but when she sat at her desk, she was so upset she forgot to eat lunch. It makes me so sad. She told Gigi. Why would they assume witches will do something wicked? Because they don't know any better, he replied with a mature air. It's nothing you can fix. It's, uh, true. They really have no idea. Witches have been doing nothing wrong. They might be different, but humans are so quick to decide that anything they don't understand is evil. I thought it was an old-fashioned idea, but... Um... Words. <laughs> so you have to show them. In, in other words, you need to advertise. Advertise? How? Maybe write lots of letters. What kind of letters? Explain how you're cute and helpful little witch. Hmm. Maybe that might work. Kiki finally brought up a bit. I guess I can try it. The music's a bit loud for me. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it down. Just the slightest. Hopefully you can still hear it. Um. Yeah, what's that? Next page. Hey, some more. All right. Um, she stood up and opened the window, and a gentle swing, spring breeze flew in as it... Yeah. <laughs> words, man. And a gentle spring breeze flew in as it had been waiting for the chance. When it brushed her face, all the tense feelings inside her melted away. She took a slow, loud look around, like a mole had just come out of its burrow, blinking in the sunlight. All the houses across the street had their windows open, too. Their curtains were tied back, allowing them to... allowing the sun to stream in. I can still hear you. Wait, okay, I read that twice. I thought it was a new chat. Um, she heard the sound of radio on the breeze, and then someone's voice calling out. Suddenly, her eyes landed on the window of a bustling short way down the street. The young lady waved her hands. Hey, over here. Come over here. She motioned instantly. Music plus reading, ASMR page turning equals sleep. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is making me sleepy. I hope the music's good enough. Um... Wait, what is this word? She motioned insistently, and no matter how Kiki looked at it, the gesture was directed at her. Me? She asked. Ooh, young lady. <laughs> You're a creep. You're a creep derp. Young lady. Yeah. Um, yes, the lady nodded. Kiki quickly took in the view and counted. The lady was in a room on the second floor, four buildings over. When Kiki went inside and up the stairs, the door was already open, so she assumed she had the right place. In the apartment, the wavy, the wavy, the wavy, sorry, I thought red is lady. The wavy lady stood in the front of a mirror and was putting on a red hat with one hat, with one hand holding a blue letter suitcase in the other. Oh, come in, come in. She spoke rapidly, and she noticed Kiki in the reflection. This seems, this music's too, too loud, man. I have to find a calmer one. What's the calm one? Maybe chat will help me, not, not this chat. Holy chat. Nah. She might be a creep. I don't think so. This is a children's book. <laughs> I hope she's not a creep. That would be, that would just kill my day. There you go. The music's not too loud for me anymore. actually got the ends of stream. Or not the stream, but the um the video so let me go back to the beginning. There you go. Um what to do? Where was I actually? I actually can't find where I was. Uh I heard about you from the baker. You deliver things, right? Yes I do. 
She fed your you fly, uh, words. She fed you fly? Uh, yes, Kiki lowered her eyes, worried that the lady was about to complain. She fed all you need in return is a little something. Kiki nodded. You sure you're... You sure are adorable, though. I always thought witches had fangs and horns. She sounded surprised, but her expression was bored. <laughs> Kiki nearly shouted. That's not a nice thing to say, but managed to catch herself. The woman must have noticed her reaction. Sorry, it's just that we've never had a witch in this town, you know? At least I haven't seen one before. And they're always so scary in the stories. By the way, how much counts as a little something? If you fly, it must be expensive. No, it's just a little of whatever you have is enough. Whatever I have... Half of what? You sure are adorable, creep. <laughs> no, I don't think so. it's cause, okay. <laughs> so that's funny. It's funny though, it made me laugh. Um, half of what? I mean, I'm just a seamstress, so I could have have, I could have the ha length of your shirt. I'm taking up and letting them hems all the time. The lady turned around for the first time and, page turn? Which is not scary, so go to summer camp. I'm gonna change the music now. It's music changing time. Let's get a bit of Animal Crossing music in, shall we? Because this is too loud. I think it's gonna kill me. The music is going to kill me. There we go. Better music. Whee! Oh, the last music was bad. It's just that <laughs> this it was too intense, man. Ding, ding. Ba -da -bam -bam. This is even better. <laughs> Cause it's sleepy. Alright, um Let's see. Uh Wait, I have to go back to the line, line four. I, is that Kirby? That is Kirby. Um, the lady turned around for the first time and looked Kiki up and down, wrinkling her nose. Then she shook her head, clucking her tongue in disapproval. Tsk tsk tsk, tusk tusk tusk. <laughs> the dress is cute, but is that a bit long? Don't you think? The style these days is to show your knees. Ah, yes, that's the perfect trade. We'll be back in three days, and then I'll take your hem up. Why don't we have uh, that be your free? Why don't we have that be your fee? Adorable, I know. Kirby is adorable. I don't even know what I'm delivering yet, and you're already deciding the fee. Kiki stood up, frowning a bit. Uh, the lady looked in the mirror and pinned on her hat, then spoke even faster than before. A bit long? These lines sound weird. No! <laughs> no, don't mean that that's not what I meant. But it's a bit long. Okay. <laughs> You're overthinking this, I promise. Um, I got called by a Clarn far away and have to race over there. Once she decides she wants the dress, she needs me to come right away. So impatient. The lady pointed at a birdcage covered in white lace sitting on the table. This is a present for my nephew's fifth birthday. I'd like you to deliver it for me. To deliver it for me. Um, he said he wanted a new bird, bird cage, bird cage and a stuffed toy. He made me promise I'd deliver it today by 4 o'clock. Even if it's a little late, he said he'll make me do 94 hand headstands. <laughs> that is a, uh, overthinking it, but the wording is weird. White lice? When did I say white lice? There wasn't any white lice here. Wait, let me go back a bit. Um, oh, in white lace. White lace. Like, like, a, like a bow tie? He wants the birdcage to be in like a white laced bow tie. Not, not, not lice, I promise. <laughs> Um, I'll deliver it by t four today, even if it's a little late. He said he'll make me do 94 handstands. Man, this kid, though. Just try doing that many. You'll forget which end is your head and which is your feet. There's only an, an hour left, so don't be late. I'm begging you. This address is 10 Apricot Street. Ah, my throat. Uh, if you go up the river, it's the road behind the big flower shop on the outskirts of town. The name, uh, they'll understand if you say Buzzcut Buster. <laughs> my throat. Okay, thanks in advance. When she'd finished her mile in a minute explanation, she rushed Kiki out into the apartment, holding her and covered the bird cage with the stuffed toy, and then let her, and then left herself. Um, Kiki flipped up the lace and looked inside the bird cage. Oh, Gigi, he looks just like you. How adorable. 
Sitting on the flower cushion inside the cage, she was, was a stuffed black cat with a mint green ribbon tied in the bow around its neck. Kiki put her broomstick through the handle of the birdcage, so it was positioned right behind her and a radio. Keep a close eye on it, she told Gigi as she sat, on the, sat, on, as she sat him on the broom's bristle. They then zoomed off. Zoom. <laughs> Zoom sound effects. Um, been a while since I've flown, Kiki exclaimed. Feels so good. The sun was already shining brightly in the west during part of the sky. Now and then, the wind flipped up the lace covering the cage, and Gigi stared in it, looking at him like a wear. No, look at him wearing a ribbon, all fancy like that. He grumbled. Then a moment later, he muttered to himself, perched on that thing. <laughs> that thing, yes. Oh, do you want a cushion too? Kiki turned. Uh, Kiki turned and pointed to the cage. Her eyebrows angled in a way that meant business. Reesey, Reesey, no. Gigi raced into the cage and sat on the silver cushion, which was inside. Kiki closed the door and spoke gently. It's just for a little while. As soon as I find the toy, I'll come back up and swap you. Wait, what? Did I skip a page? I did, I skipped a page. Sorry. How are you jealous of a stuffed animal that can't even move around? Sorry, that last part I skipped. Um, Gigi ignored her and slowly crept closer to the cage. Then he extended a paw and pulled it closer with his uh, claws. The broom jolted with wobble. No, hold still, Kiki yelled. Gigi picked up, pricked up his ears and pulled his paw back from his mouth. Gigi, do you want to go in the cage? Seriously? I mean, it's so pretty. Uh, Gigi, sometimes I can't believe we're the same age. She smiled at how ridiculous he was being. The broom began to fly smoothly again, but as if it had been waiting for that moment. Gigi swiftly clawed open the door and tried to climb into the cage. The broom wobbled horribly. Eek! Kiki rushed to grab the broom, but before she had the chance, she... Uh, the stuffed animal spilled out of the open cage. Oh no, it didn't matter if she screamed or reached out her hand, it was too late. The stuffed animal spilled, or the stuffed toy began to spin like a black pinwheel as it fell from the sky. Um, Kiki immediately swooped after it. The leafy green forest grew closer and closer until Kiki had plunged in. Tree branches whipped her body, eventually found a little clearing and touched down. Then she got straight to searching, waving her broom to look through the bushes and tall grass as she walked along. But she couldn't find the cat. The forest was huge, and the trees were covering it in soft leaves. If the toy had caught in the canopy of tangled branches above, she would never be able to find it. On top of that, the stuffed animal was light, so the wind could have blown it in an entirely different direction. Kiki wanted to cry. The lady had believed in her, though thought it was the first time they'd met, and trusted her with the important delivery. This was Kiki's first customer since the shop had opened, and the job was going to end in failure. It was almost four o'clock, and Kiki stared at Gigi, who was hunched over at girls. What am I supposed to do now? Almost immediately, she gasped. Gasped, um... Oh, I thought of a great idea. Gigi, you get in the cage instead. Gigi gazed up in the back of her, shaking his head. You were the only one who wanted to go inside. Just get in there. We're out of time. Kiki raised her voice, um, and pointed to the cage. Her eyebrows angled in a way that meant business. This is where we, like, I skipped to last time. Gigi raced into the cage and sat on the silver cushion, which was still inside. Kiki closed the door and gently spoke. <coughs> Sorry, my throat's just dying from speaking. Let's see how many people are. Still with you? It is still with you. That's nice. Um, Kiki closed the door and spoke gently. It's just for a little while, as soon as you'll find the toil. Toy. I'll come back and swap you out. Yeah, you're here. Nice. And he looked up at her with regret in his eyes. So I'm a stuffed animal now? That's right. I can't meow. Nope. Just go to sleep. That'll be easier. Can I breathe? As little as possible. Well, this is horrible. I'm up against Buzzcut Buster. Buster. The lady said he would make her do 94 handstands. <laughs> um, you'll be fine. I'll just come back for you as soon as I can. Gigi signed, curled, or side curled up in a sad little ball and turned away from Kiki. This music's gonna shoot me. I don't know if you can hear the music still, but... Too loud for me, man. You'll be fine. I'll come back for you as soon as I can. Torture. Love it. <laughs> yep. Just stick the cat in the thing. She won't, they won't notice that it's not a stuffed animal. Um, I can hear the music. Can you still hear it now? It's, it's ending, the song's ending, so you probably can't hear it now, but... Alright, um... Uh, where was I? 
Kiki flew along the river, checking names of the streets at, e in at each intersection. She had no trouble finding 10 Apricot Street before the flower shop. <coughs> my throat, man. You, I can hear the next one. Good. Sorry, my throat's getting a bit dry from eating. I'm gonna get a glass of water, maybe. Uh, yeah, so I'll be back in like a second or two. Just don't leave. Or you can if you want. <laughs> Turned. I told you I'd be quick. Literally just getting a sip of water from the tap. <laughs> um, hope you like the thumbnail as well. I, I like making the thumbnail. Um, all right. Kiki flew out. Oh wait, no, I read that. Uh, when she rang the doorbell, she heard thudding footsteps. Then the door swung open. Auntie stood in front of Kiki. With it was a boy with one bandage on his cheek. One on his nose and two on his forehead and three on his knees. Jesus, this kid's been bet, man. <laughs> I didn't say that in the book, I promise. I'm sorry, your aunt couldn't come, but I came in her place. Here, are you supposed to be getting presents, as she promised? Happy birthday. When the boy took the cage, he peered and slid away and then started jumping around, up and down, holding it tight. Through a gap in the lace, Kiki could see Gigi bouncing up and down inside with a grimace on his face. Yeah, ouch indeed. Oh, hey, hey, Kiki said, be nice to the kitty. Okay. Yeah, because it's not a OBS disconnected. That's not good. That is not good. Is stream working? Stream didn't die, did it? Stream might have died. Please say stream didn't die. Please, 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 please. Stream, you still alive? Stream, you still alive? Okay, good. Phew. No, it's just that OBS, which is my thing that I used to stream the footage. Cut out for a second. Okay, good. 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 Um, there's... I'm gonna read about... Uh... Well, I'm gonna read to the end of this chapter, which should be about... Seven-ish more pages, if that's okay. And then I'll end it there for the night, since we're getting quite far in. Uh, I'll stream again tomorrow, of course. Uh, let me pull up the imagery again. All right. There you go. Um, where was I? Okay, let me read. Where was I? Where is I? Um. I will. I'll take good care of him. I'll fold him up properly and put him in my pocket. The boy stuck his tongue out. Eep, a pitiful noise came from inside the cage. Well, we'll see you later. Kiki waves to the boy. Oh, will you have something else for me? Um, well, perhaps. And with that, she mounted her broom and raced off. Um, when Kiki returned to the clearing, she realized the forest was actually part of a park. She took another careful walk around the area with the stuffed animal had fallen, but she couldn't find it anywhere. At this rate, she was worried Gigi would remain with that bug's cut buster forever. How would he have never come home, even though he had started life on there, alone as the pair? Dusk approached, uh, dusk approached, and Kiki leaned against a tree at, at Wood's end. She'd clutched down the scar of her dress. The best option was to cut off the hem of my dress and make a stuffed cat myself. Although I always wanted it shorter, so I guess it's worth a try. Just, just then, she faintly heard something saying, the bad black cat is a smoky black- wait, this is actually like a song. There's like, bad luck rises, yeah. She can't find it. There's a song written here. <laughs> uh, I don't know if I'll sing it, maybe I'll read it. Uh, <laughs> the bad black is a smoky black. Uh, the good black is a black cat black. The best of all is a witch's black. Black comes all different various hues, so come on now, you have to choose. Startled, Kiki turned around and spotted a cottage behind the tree, where she had leaned against. Behind a section of a hedge that had grown wild. Um, the cottage window was open, and a woman with her hair tung tightly from her face, away from her face, uh, from Kiki, painted a picture. This is weird, this is exactly just a film. 
the film was very loyal to the book. <laughs> um, maybe she saw something. I'll go ask. Kiki made her way through a gap in the hedge and crossed a flowering lawn to approach the house. When she peeked through the house, she called a woman. Called out to a woman. She realized that the woman's picture was cat-shaped. With a start, she looked beyond the painting and was gasping. It was the stuffed animal she had lost. Um. Oh, that's convenient. <laughs> where is where is it? I lost lost where I was. Oh, there. The woman hurried her and turned around, face to face. They both shrieked. Uh, um, that, uh, that you, uh, oh, phew, oh, God. They both sighed in unison. I'm so glad I found it. Wait, what? They, they both said that, by the way. They both said, I'm so glad I found it. And the two eyed each other, puzzled. For me, it's that black cat toy. For me, it's you, a girl in such a wonderful black dress. Their voices overlapped as their sentences. Um, meshed into nonsense. Wait. Yeah. Yes, convenient as, convenient as apples falling. Indeed. For me, it's that black uh, girl wonder cat dress toy. That's what it meshed into. <laughs> uh, Kiki finally composed herself and asked the woman clearly. Did that stuffed cat fall out of a tree by any chance? The woman looked at Kiki curiously. I don't know if it rained out of the sky or welled up from the ground, but I found it in the forest a little while ago. I've been searching for a, a good black cat to paint for my expedition. My exposition. Expedition. <laughs> there you go. Um, the real black is black, you know? If anything's a, wi a witch's black, I'm making it just to do with stuffed animal right now. I'm just, just making do with the stuffed animal right now. There you go. The woman stopped talking, but when she ran her eyes over the broom Kiki was holding, she yelped, Could it be that you're a... Yes, I'm a witch. The woman Kiki responded, the woman's practically jumping around the window to grab her hand. Uh, if you'd like, no, if you like, the woman said, I'll give you this black cat, but you can come inside and sit for me. I was even thinking about moving because I heard that there hadn't been a witch in this town for ages, and now a witch has come to me? Come and sit down. She just really likes witches, I suppose. Um, <laughs> Kiki was nearly swept up by the woman's momentum, but she flailed and said, I will, I will, just not right now. I have to, if I can get the black cat, no, if I can get the toy, I'll bring back a real black cat. A witch's black cat. And then you can paint both of us. Gasp. A witch! Burn the witch! This one's like an absolute witch stan. I remember it from the, from the film. The film's really just like a collection of little jobs, odd jobs that Kiki does. Um, really? For sure, Kiki shouted with a nod. Once she had the stuffed toy in her hand, she rushed off, rushed off without looking. It was a promise, Sam, the woman called after. By the time Kiki reached Buzzcoat's house, it was completely dark outside. Kiki tiptoed up to the window and peeked inside. Oh, there's Gigi. He was in bed with Buzzcutter, who had hugged him tightly. Gigi was far from uh, folded, but he was crumbled. His face was turning towards the black the back, uh, clamped down before the boy's hand, and his stomach was being crushed into the boy's arm. On his nose, where uh, he had been banged, that matches Buzzcut's busters. Oh, he had a plaster on his nose. Um, Kiki quietly opened the door, or the window, stood uh, on her toes and pulled Gigi's tail. Gigi didn't move. He kept his promise and truly transformed into a stuffed animal. The back of Kiki's nose stung as she held back tears of his gratitude. What a precious friend he is. No other friend would um, pretend to be a stuffed animal so that you could go find the real one and then get beat up by a kid. Gigi, Gigi, she called in a low voice. He slowly opened one eye. Kiki set the toy in the boy's stomach and whispered, hurry. Gigi slipped away from the boy and bounced it like a ball into Kiki's arms. She couldn't tell if he was laughing or crying, but he was purring deep into his throat. Um, how wonderful it is. Oh, dang sad. Yeah, no, dang sad indeed. How wonderful it is to finally breathe and to be able to move. Gigi looked around with a, new, re a renewed curiosity as he flew as he and Kiki flew through the sky. About that, Kiki said without looking at him. <laughs> oh yeah, it's, it's just as he said, he was um, bit finally free to move. They're gonna go have to stand around for like two hours as they're painted. That's funny. Um, sorry, but there's something else I need your help with. This time you don't have to pretend to be a stuffed animal. Though, uh, you can laugh, cry, whatever you like. That'll be a piece of cake then, Gigi nodded as if he finally un understood everything perfectly. <laughs> But when the painter sat Kiki and Gigi down next to each other, she ordered, straighten up. Mr. Witch Cat, curl your tail and make sure make a serious face, okay? Good, now hold your breath, just like that. Just like that, don't move. Gigi bristled angrily. 
Um, but only that only made the painter shriek with delight. Oh, fantastic! That's a witch's cat for you. Just like that. Just like that. As Kiki sat there, uh, prim and proper, she was uh, thrilled. There's another person who likes me. That's just all I think Kiki wants is people to like her. He doesn't care about anything but that. Just trying to fit into society. Um, that night, Kiki wrote a first letter to Okino on Kokiri. Um, for Derp, if you don't know who those are. Okino is um, Kiki's father and Ko Kokiri is his mother. Or her mother, I should say. Um, I decided to live in a little place called Koriko. It's a big town near the sea. At first I thought it might be too big, but it turned out to be perfect for the type of work I started to do. I started my own business, Kiki's Delivery Service. She wrote about everything she had ha that had happened to her so far, leaving out the moments where she had felt discouraged, of course. She ended her letter like this. The streamstress said, the stream says, the seamstress, goddamn words. <laughs> the seamstress said she would have half the length of my skirt, but I think I'm gonna have her make a silver cushion for Gigi. Next time I'll send a picture of his calm face. We're having fun, but please don't worry. Uh, take care, both of you. Bye. That is the end of the chapter. Quite a long one. Uh, let me just turn down the music a bit so I can speak properly. <laughs> what you think? What you think? What you think? I now here's the decision we must make as a collective. I'm 69 pages in. <laughs> conveniently and um, should I continue or should we just very interesting story indeed yeah I like it a lot it's my favorite Studio Ghibli film so the book is just as good and um, yeah no the question is should I continue or should we just end it here and continue tomorrow and kind of cute in some places well it is supposed to be wholesome I like it I like it a lot I'm pretty funny yeah I agree I agree all of the above. So, continue or end it here and continue tomorrow. I don't want to go too far in the book, but like it's been an hour and a half, so is that a good place to end or it's up to you. Do you want to continue? I would like to continue, but I did about 40 pages yesterday and just there uh, like 69. So just a little bit more. I know I did like 34 pages yesterday. So, should we save, should we, like, we save the book a bit till, um, I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I'll let you decide this one, Derp. Would you like to continue? I will wait patiently for my reply. This Nintendo music is banging though. We're actually almost halfway through the book. I didn't get a reply. I think you're still thinking if you want me to continue or not. I think we should keep going. I don't have any other plans. Unless we are talking today. Um, I will be able to talk today actually. Straight after this I will. But if you think we should continue, I guess I will. I guess I will. Let me see how many more. I think I'll only do one more chapter, but I will continue. Then again, the chapters in this are quite long. There's only about five, I think. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, they are. They are very long. Um, so from page 69 to 88 is how far we're going. I guess they're not that long, but it's a short book, so in comparison to the length, it's quite long. Yay, boy! <laughs> Um, <laughs> alright, I'm gonna continue. Um, this is the next chapter. It's called Kiki Finds Herself in a Tough Spot. That's a, a depressing chapter title, <laughs> I must say. But it's fine. I like having the little Kirby thing here. It's nice, I think. It's really a makeshift little um, stream vibe going on here, but I don't think anyone's paying attention to the what's on screen, really. Alright, I'm gonna continue. Um, let me clear my, clear my throat a bit, actually. <laughs> cough, cough. Um, okay. Three, two, one. Kiki opened the front door to let her shop in, and instinctively shaded her eyes with her hand. It's so bright. 
When she first moved into town, the sun had beamed down with a mild, playful glow. It wasn't all that different from the sunlight in her own small town, back at home in many forests. But now it pounded down ruthlessly, as if taking aim and hurling itself. Somewhere by the sea is something else, uh, Kiki murmured. It's hard to breathe. She undid some of the buttons on her collar to cool off, and then stood up on her toes. That sounds comfortable. This music is very intense. <laughs> it's not intense, it's just... Um, oh my gosh, it's as if I'm not able to see the sea on my tippy toes. Oh no, it's, it's as if I'll be able to see the sea on my tippy toes. Um, I must be thinking of Mum's letter. Back home, she would stand on her tiptoe in front of her garden, where she would see as far as the eastern peak of the mountain green. Then she, the note she received from Kokiri two days ago reminded her that the mountain and the little town she'd left. I could feel that, the sun in my eyes, the sun in my eyes all the time, and I'd be out in my car. I might listen to this falling asleep more often. <laughs> yes. This is, this is a fun thing to do. Although, not that many people are interested in this kind of thing. It's just, it's just fun. It's fun for me. Got to continue. Uh, where is it? Uh, the note she received from Kokiri two days ago reminded her of the mountain and the little town she had left. Yesterday, this is the note, by the way, uh, that her mother wrote. Uh, yesterday I was out, so I stopped by Mountain Green on my way home. I remembered how I would stand you on errands, and you would stop off there and take forever to come back. The grass was almost up to my knees. I sat there for a while, looking up at the sky. And then what do you suppose happened? I fell asleep, and the grass smelled so sweet, and the breeze was blowing so gently. I'm not sure how long I slept, but when I woke up, I rushed home. Your dad saw my face, and he laughed. He said I looked just like you, with marks of from the grass on my cheeks. I ended up laughing, too. Wow. That's funny. <laughs> this is so wholesome. Um... Kiki remembered playing in that field of Mount Green under the blazing sun, and walking down the roads of her town. She missed it so much her heart ached. Okay, she said, shaking off her sad feelings. Let's get the day started. Um, I read chat again. Oh, this is it. Oh, Lavender Moth, welcome! You seem to be amazed by the stream. <laughs> I can tell from your little icon there. Blo big, big shock faces. She looked up at the sky and saw a meteor. Oh, I'm the wrong shoot. Oh, I'm wrong shoot. Yeah, I know. Sad, right? It would have been cool to see a meteor. I wouldn't have any problems with seeing a meteor. I'm sure it's not what Kiki probably thought when she looked at the sky. Uh, welcome to the stream, Lavender Moth. We're just reading through Kiki's delivery service, which you probably know, maybe, is um, the book that the film was based off, the Studio Ghibli film, which by, by the same name, Kiki's delivery service. Just a nice little story about uh, like a, a tween witch girl who goes to live on her own and figure out how to do business and stuff. So she sets up a delivery service where she'll fly to people and deliver things to them. I don't know. That's how I describe it. I do know. Yay, great. <laughs> it is pretty... It's a pretty nice book. It's a pretty great film. It's actually my favourite Studio Ghibli film, so... This book is just perfect for me. Laying in the grass is pretty comfy. I agree. Kiki and Kiki's mother seem to also like that too. Um, I don't know, is it? Other than artists and, ants and spiders. Oh, he seems shocked. Quick, uh, not quick question, but do you know like the story? It's like, or do you need a rundown of what it's about? Or should I just continue from where I was? Cause if you heard the story before, or if you've seen the film, maybe. Maybe read the book, I don't know. Uh, this is just after she delivered the stuffed little, um, like, the stuffed cat in the cage thing to that, um, woman. I don't remember her name. To, like, the, to the kid. And she just got back from being, like, painted by that one woman in the woods who loved witches. And this is the day after, I think. Maybe a few days after. Um, continues. Okay, I do not need a rundown. Alright, then. Uh, I guess I will continue. Uh... Um, okay, she said, shaking off the sad feelings. Let's go get the day started. Switching gears. Oh, I must be drawn. Oh, I'm gonna just be drawn. Nice. Drawn pretty cool, though. Draw and chill. <coughs> my throat, man. I'll be talking for like an hour and a half, just reading. My throat's dying. Um, okay, I'll continue. Okay, she said, shaking off the sad feelings. Let's get the day started. Switching gears, Kiki decided to polish her broom with a soft cloth. Caring for her equipment was something she had done she had done every morning since she opened the delivery service. Oh, what a busy bee you are. Added today too? 
Ofuno came out of the bakery. Came out of the bakery, not with the bakery. <laughs> uh, next door, carrying her baby and spoke to it. Or spoke to Kiki, opening the window. No matter how much effort you put in, I don't think you'll get much work done today. The town is empty. Well, there does seem to be that determined boy cleaning the alley, but otherwise, there's no one else around. Um, Kiki looked up and down and peered out the street. Sure enough, all he could see was just a high contrast of dazzling sunlight and a black shadow. Today is Sunday, El Snow explained, plus it's the middle of the summer. Everyone's gone to the beach. The beach? Why? To swim, of course. Why don't you take the day off and go too? But it's so hot. Oh sheesh, the whole town, the whole uh, reason to go, isn't it? <coughs> My throat, man, is dying. <coughs> I'm just gonna die. I'm just gonna die here from having a dry throat. I need another glass of bloody water. Let me find one. Water. Well, I just drank a random cup of water. I hope it wouldn't have like medicine in it or something. Should be fine. Jesus. <laughs> what? Are you dying over here? Sorry. Sorry for my dying noises. Um, it'll feel good. It's rough. Oh, this is me reading again. This isn't me just speaking. <laughs> um, it'll be good. It's rough living in the, here in the summer, if you don't go to the beach. But I've never even been swimming before. Even more reason to go. If you need a swimsuit, I'll lend you one. I happen to have a black one from when I was younger. Witches have to wear black, right? But you're not going to come, Elsena. With the little one? <laughs> I can't. I still have to suffer throughout the year. You're lucky you can easily fly over. I'll go with you, though I can watch the baby. Um, Kiki reached through the open window and softly brushed the cheeks of the child sleeping comfortably in Elsena's arms. Swimming, yay. I totally agree. Swimming nice, man. I miss swimming. That's one thing I miss from the whole big boy Rona situation. Um, where is I? <coughs> Literally, my throat, man. It is sore. Um, I'm fine. You haven't had any chances to relax since you got here. You've been getting more and work, more work little by little, so take it easy for a change. You, can't, you can simply lie in the sand. Wait just a minute and I'll grab these suits for you. And I'll grab the suit for you. If you wear it under your dress, it will be easy to change when you get there. Also, no bustle back into the house, back into her house. The beach, huh? Kiki murmured before turning to Gigi. Uh, should we go check it out? Gigi was laying like a pad of melted butter, sprawled out in the steps in the shady spot where the breeze was better. He answered in such a nasally irked voice. Uh, you're telling me someone wearing a fur coat in the heat to move? How cruel. But we'll be flying in the sea breeze. I think it will feel much better than sitting at home. Plus, I think they need to take the broom out for a fun flight now and then. Now and then, huh? Gigi sniffled sluggishly, rose to his feet, flicking his tail. Kiki bobbed her head with a smile and set out closing the shop's windows. Uh, when Elsino brought the swimsuit, Kiki stretched it out first and then slipped into it. The fabric snapped back and clung to her skin like a rubber band. Uh, is this how it's supposed to fit? Kiki asked Elsino, shrinking in embarrassment. Yes, you look great. I'm jealous of how this, how this suit fits you. It's like my whole body is squished. I feel weird. Swimsuits be like that though, don't they? Um, you're fine, just as you are. Plus, once you get there, everyone will be wearing the same sort of thing. It's alright, just get going. <gasps> Mario Galaxy music started playing. That makes me happy. That makes me very happy. Um, I'm just gonna check. Stream? Still one person watching, I think. I think Lavender Moth may have left. <laughs> Maybe. I don't know. Um... Where is I? Uh, Kiki put her dress on over her swimsuit, and with her broom and the radio in her hand, she went outside with Gigi. She hung a sign up in the door that said, Closed for the day. My whole body is squashed. Nope, not gonna think. Derp! Listen here, Derp. <laughs> this, is a, this is a wholesome story. Stop trying to ruin it with your creepy little creepiness. Just enjoy the, the wholesomeness of the story. Stop pointing out weird sentences. Or make, by pointing them out, you make them weird sentences, I should say. That is the way I see it. And that's the way I will forever see it. Um, I'm gonna continue anyway. Kiki and Gigi sped across the blue sky. The radio was playing a cheery song, and Kiki swayed to the music. This feels great. She skillfully caught the wind and flew side to side by in big Kiwi curves. Um, Chat said something. 
I'll tell the story to stop wording words weirdly. Tell the story. <laughs> Fair. Okay. Story, stop telling the words weirdly, please. Speed is key. Vroom. Flying is fantastic. It's no wonder Olsen I wanted to learn. Kiki squinted down at Kokiri. Or Koriko. Sorry, that's the name of the town. I always get them mixed up with the name of the mother. The town spread like two butterfly wings from either side of the big river. It seemed to be moving to the music, too. Gigi tapped her back. Hey, Kiki, there's some sort of announcement on the radio. At some point, uh, a weather forecast had interrupted the music. We have an important win uh, warning. The gusts known as the mischievous Marian winds may blow over today's off the coast of Koriko. True their name, they have this time of the year. Uh, these winds come whipping through the, without warning. Everyone who is out swimming, please be careful. See, it says the wet weather is going to be bad, said Gigi. What? But it's so nice out. Kiki wasn't worried at all. Look, we can see the beach. There's plenty of people out playing. The forecast must be a mistake. You know, expect the worst when you're trying to have fun. It's a bad habit. Um, being too goody isn't a good habit either. Gigi bristled and turned away. A moment later, Kiki angled the broom to a descent. She landed softly on the isolated patch of sand. Kiki had never heard of a witch going to the beach, but she thought it would be better to avoid sticking out. Kiki sent a sidelong glance at the more crowded area. Everyone was absorbed in their fun. Some people were having ha having sandball fights. That's a thing. Sandball? Can you even put sand into a ball, actually? I just want to just, like, sieve through your fingers. I'm not going to question it. While others were buried in sand to their necks. Some were uh, sunning their backs. Some chased, uh, chasing waves at the edge of the water. And some swam, swam in the ocean with big strokes. There were so many different things to do at the beach, and wherever she looked, she found she found smiles and laughter. Uh, the wind picked up and noise noisily whipped at the fabric of the beach umbrellas. The waves grew a bit taller too, and the shouts of surfers grew more excited. Carrying the dress, she the who the words. I need a minute. <laughs> words. Okay. I'm speaking too fast. So uh, the waves grew a bit taller too, and the shouts of the surfers grew excited. Carrying the dress and shoes she had taken off, um, Kiki nervously hunched, hiding her body. It was her first time barefoot in sand, and though it wasn't even new yet, noon yet, uh, the sand was so hot it was impossible to move slowly. She hopped alongside, shrieking, and Gigi hopped too, sensibly trying to stay in Kiki's shadow. As they went, he grumbled, We look ridiculous, like two beans in a frying pan. I wish we could just show Kokiri. And when we finally made it to the crowded section of the beach, now when they finally made it to the crowded section of the beach, Kiki uh, imitated the others by digging a hole and laying in there in her stomach. Uh, here the sound was warm and comforting as a bath, and it felt wonderful. All sorts of people who passed, uh, all sorts of people's legs passed by. Barefoot in sand is good. It is, unless the sand is really hot, then it's just burnt and it's like hell. Oh, two people watching. Buggers. Uh, yeah, no, barefoot sand. Just a good idea, unless it's boiling outside. Um, all sorts of people's legs passed by. Uh, Kiki was relieved that everyone was too busy with their own fun to pay attention to anyone else. Uh, she propped her head out and her elbows looked out at the sea. It was like a great swelling creature in the constant motion. In constant motion. Um, people jumped in after one another, as if clinging to his back. Kiki realized her mother hadn't told her anything about the sea. Perhaps it was only natural, since Kokiri had never seen it. Maybe I'll go too, she said to herself. Kiki, witches might melt or something if they go on water. Don't do it, Gigi eyed her anxiously. Look, how much fun everyone is having. I don't think there's a reason it would be bad just for witches. I want to try dipping my feet in, at least. Um, as Kiki sat up in the sand, she spied a mass of clouds back... Uh, She's Man, I'm just not good at speaking. <coughs> Bleh. She spied a mass of black clouds on the horizon that hadn't been there before. Looking around, she watched a little whirl of winds and sand spin by. Oh, maybe the weather forecast was right after all. But the sun was still shining brightly overhead, so she gazed enviously back at the people playing the water. A voice called by, Hey! When Kiki turned, she saw a woman leering on her stomach, smiling at her. The woman slowly sat up and pointed to the broom. Did you bring that all the way here to play with at the beach? Are you planning on losing at least floaties? Kiki found the idea so silly she couldn't hold back her laughter. The woman shrugged and laughed herself. Then she said, I heard a witch came to town. I guess people are already starting to copy your style. How cute. I'm so busy at taking care of my son, I had no idea the latest trends are. I saw a young man with one earlier too. 
Kiki hurriedly hid behind her broom. Look, there he is over there, the one pointed behind her. Kiki looked past the people playing the sand and saw a boy carrying a bag and broom, watching them. Oh, he's probably cleaning up the beach. Is that right? Are you a cleaner too? I thought for sure. As she, um, wait, what? Where am I? <laughs> I thought for sure as she spoke, she craned her neck and looked around, then suddenly shouted, Hey, hey buddy, you can't go so far away. Stay where I can see you. That's good, right there. You can splash in the water. Look, here comes a big wave. Oh, wet sand, maybe? Wet sand, you're right, sleeping. Wet sand isn't that bad either. Everyone likes a bit wet sand. That sounds so wrong, Callum. <laughs> Damn it. Um, like, I remember when I was in Florida. This, this was meant to be a story time with it. I like I'm an Irish boy, so in Ireland the it's not many beaches at all, and they're never really warm. They're usually quite windy. So I went to America, and like the sand was boiling over it in Florida. I just I just couldn't I couldn't handle it. It's too it's, your feet just burn off you. Uh, also, welcome to the stream, sleeping. <laughs> I don't know if you've been on this channel before, but I'm just reading Kiki's delivery service, and. Um, do you know what it is? <laughs> if you already know this, like the, if you already seen the film, maybe, or if you read the book, then I guess I don't really need to give you a rundown of what's happened. But um, just in case, you know. Just in the case. Uh... No, you there? I'll give it another few seconds. Maybe, maybe they're there. It's a possibility, I think. Ah, no. I'm sad we'll never meet. Who? <coughs> Me and you. Not really sad. Adds a weirdness to it. Maybe it's sad. I don't know. I think it's fine. Maybe we will. Who knows? Who knows? I'm just gonna continue reading. Um. Uh, where was I? I kind of want to visit Ireland. It sounds so chill. I'm looking outside at the weather right now. Ireland is not chill. <laughs> Ireland is anything but chill. Nah, Ireland's fine. Nah, I'm joking. It's not sad, to be honest. It's lethargic. <laughs> nah, Ireland's quite nice. Ireland's a nice place. I insult it all the time, but it's good. I love having this music here. How long have we been streaming? An hour and 42 minutes. Lovely. Alright, I'm gonna continue. Um. Wait, where was I? Anything? <laughs> uh, when the woman waved, the little boy sitting on an orange inflatable raft kicked his feet. The woman turned back to Kiki and sighed heavily. Kids are cute, but such a handful. Being a mother is rough. Then the woman looked away again and shrilly raised her voice. Hey, don't go out too deep. That's right there. Sit right there. Good boy. She turned back to Kiki with a smile. I'd at least like to get some relaxation time when I come to the beach. Oh, do you think your kitty will be able to play with my son? He looks so sweet. Then my boy wouldn't wander off. The one reached out to pet Gigi, trying to get on his good side. Nah, go play with him, Gigi. Kiki po poked him in the stomach. Uh, Gigi rose lazily and from the ground and groaned from a pit of his stomach. She called me a full-grown cat. No, she called me a full-grown cat, a kitty. Ugh. He grumbled to himself as he walked towards the water's edge. Twitching his tail back and forth. What a smart kitty, the woman watched with a smile until Gigi reached his son on the flavor raft. Satisfied, she then lay back on her stomach humming. Gigi decided to lie down too. When she closed her eyes, she could hear the jumble of sounds around more clearly. The sea salty smell. Uh, oh, I'm not too sad to be honest. Oh wait, I read that twice. <laughs> I keep looking up and down every once in a while, you know? The sea salty smell, a mix of fishness and seaweed, was pretty nice too. Without warning, she heard a roar and a completely different sort of wind blew past. It was so intense it seemed as though it fell from the sky. Yelps and screams of surprise rose on the beach. Probably the wind in it. And <laughs> after blinking the sand out of her eyes, Kiki saw the straw hats and crisscrossing through the air and inflatable rings rolling around like wheels. She stood up with a start. The peaceful beach had completely transformed. People were grabbing their kids under their arms and ran out from pine groves at the end of the beach. Others were chasing blongs that had blown the wind. <laughs> I hate when that happens, if you're on the beach and everything just like, the wind just kicks in, you know? Oh, more art here. It's just Kiki looking at everything flying away. And, oh no, the woman next to her screamed at the top of her lungs, frantically swimming, uh, frantically, frantically sprinting towards the water.
Kiki's eyes followed the woman and she saw that orange raft carrying the boy and Gigi was caught between two huge waves. The, the woman leapt into the water, but the raft along with the boy um, and Gigi was pulled into a strong whirlpool and dragged to the sea. All Kiki could hear was piercing sobs. <coughs> oh man. Me! Hello. Music plus... Uh, uh, wait, what? How come that's appeared twice? Music plus reading plus ASMR for church training. Sleep sleep. Is this making you really sleepy? Also, hello sleeping. Yep, yeah, you are asleep. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you're- are you new to this channel? I know I'm doing a bit of a questionnaire on you while we're, um, while we're doing this. <laughs> while I'm reading, but... If you have any compl- not complaints. Complaints is a rough word. <laughs> no, if you have any um, criticism or anything just to, like, is, am I reading too loud or too quickly? Just say. I'm gonna continue anyway. Um, where was I actually? Uh, she ran to towards the water, and the water, wait no, she ran towards the water and shouted to Gigi, Hold on tight, I'm coming to save you. Uh, then she turned to the woman who stood helplessly over the water. Don't worry, I can fly. I'll save your boy. Your boy? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know why I said that. Someone nearby said, that's right, you're the flying girl from Kiki's delivery service, aren't you? Please hurry, the woman urged, hurry. Kiki ran back to the sand to get her broom. But the moment she picked it up, she went pale. This wasn't her broom. It was a cheap one. A copy that looked nearly identical to one of those. How could this happen? Especially to me at a time like this. Someone swapped my broom for... Um, you know, someone swapped my broom in the middle of the storm. Or was it just as I was relaxing when my eyes were closed? Kiki's heart pounded. What do I do? In any case, she didn't have much time to think. Kiki... Bleh, Kiki... <laughs> mounted the unfamiliar broom in a hurry and took off. But the moment she was, the broom took a nosedive and she dipped into the water. Oh no, everyone watching gasped. Kiki pulled the handle in panic, but soon the back bristles fell into the ocean with a splash. The broom had become heavier as it soaked up water and drifted towards the, bre the beach. Kiki even tried everything she could to change direction, but the broom, unruly as a wild horse, kept pulling her back towards and trying to throw her off. Uh, the boy and Gigi drifted further and further away each passing moment. Still, Kiki fl de desperately flew on. After being dunked and bunked, <laughs> dunked and bunked along the way, she finally caught up to the raft. Then she stretched out herself on the broom, stick and extended her hand. The boy was crying too hard to take it, so she finally managed to grab hold. Grab hold of page turn, page turn ASMR. Oh, his trunks and lifted him up. She grabbed him by his trunks. <laughs> by swimming trunks. Wow. And then she snitched Gigi by the tail. Right after, she pulled them to safety. A huge wave crashed over the orange raft, sending it spinning and washing it away. All the bystanders on the beach jumped and cheered. Uh, when Kiki somehow made it to the shore, she handed the exhausted boy to his mother, holding an equally exhausted Gigi. Uh, Kiki hurriedly pulled her dress over her wet swimsuit and then grabbed her uh, radio. Is that a good idea? Putting your dress over the completely destroyed suit? No, I don't think so. <laughs> then she grabbed her radio, hopped on an unsteady broom, and took off again. Why don't you rest her a bit? Someone called her. This wind is bad, but Kiki couldn't possibly do that. She needed to find her broom. She had an idea of where to look. Earlier, she had caught a glimpse of that boy with a broom. He must have wanted a real one from a witch and swapped them. Kiki was furious. It was unforgivable. And she was lucky she'd saved Gigi and that boy on the beach. But when she thought of what could have happened, she had failed. She couldn't stop shaking. I'm going to catch him. I'm going to make him apologize for a million times over. Kiki kept a careful watch on the ground as she continued harking and jerking across the sky in a bronco broom. A bronco broom, huh? That's a fancy sentence. Just those two people watching? Buggers. <laughs> um, if someone wanted a witch's broom so badly, they stole it. Um, no, if it, someone had Richard's broom so badly they stole it, that was the first place they would go. Kiki thought it would be somewhere high, like a cliff, because of course, they would want to try flying. So she flew from hill to hill between the beach of the town Kukri. Kiki, over there, Gigi pointed ahead. Just as she thought, someone wearing a black dress was standing at the top of a little hill, about to test their flying skills. Kiki, we have to stop them. Shh, quiet, G Kiki stopped her broom midair. Uh, they'll get hurt, Gigi warned again. But if they want to fly, then let them fly. If things turn out bad, they'll learn the lesson. Taking someone's belongings without asking is a horrible thing to do. 
Kiki replied coldly. Jesus, Kiki. <laughs> Did she not say that witches are the only ones who can fly? So this kid's about to jump off a cliff and she's okay with it just to teach him a lesson. That's a bit. You see what I meant by Kiki actually being a murderer? Uh, Kiki replied coldly, holding the buckling broom instead. They're really gonna do it, Gigi cried. The person on the hill took a leap, but they landed flat on the bottom and rolled like a pebble down the slope. Kiki flew after them. Sleeping Prince, welcome. Nice to see you here. And uh, Kiki's delivery service stream. Whoa, 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 whoa. I totally agree with that statement. What? What, what? What's wrong? <laughs> I'm reading. Who could have guessed? Someone left as soon. Okay. Well, <laughs> I guess you're gone. I think. Maybe. I'm now. I'm confused. Why are you confused? I just said welcome to the stream. Uh. What, what's your confusion? Where is your confusion coming from? Tell me. Uh, we're just reading Kiki's delivery service. In case you're confused about that, maybe. I don't know. But, um. Have you. Do you know what Kiki's delivery service is, actually? Like, I think I know you do, don't you? But, um. Like, just so you know, we're like halfway through the book. So. You might be a bit confused on what's going on. No? You there? Oh, God. I'm gonna guess that you are here, maybe? I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna continue. <laughs> I've explained every time someone new joins, I'm always like, oh yeah, so basically this is the whole story. Um, but you'll, you'll catch on. Probably. And then they vanished. <laughs> yes, they just fell down the hill and vanished. I'm gonna continue. Um, there was actually. Uh, yeah, the person. Oh, I know, I read that. Kiki flew after them. The broom thief was shaking their body out, of, out and rumbling and rubbing their backside <laughs> when she landed there, and teased irritably. Too bad it didn't work out. Never to be seen again. Jesus. <laughs> yeah, he just died. No one ever found his body. Uh, the face looked up at her in surprise. Was sure the boy she had seen on the beach. He looked about Kiki's age. His glasses were cracked and he had peppered bleeding scrapes. Kiki giggled. He was even wearing a black dress identical to her own clothes. Um, well. You sure put a lot of effort, she said. Right down to my witch's dress. The boy stood up with a frown, tore the dress off, blushed furiously and hung his head. You caused a lot of trouble for me. Kiki thumped the handle of the broom into the ground, exaggerating her anger. In truth, she seemed to... Wait, what? Oof. Oh. <laughs> In truth, seeing him im imitate everything about her crackled her up more than it made her mad i'd like to see you say you yeah i'd like to see you say you're sorry <laughs> there you go yeah that must hurt wouldn't it and um, at least a million times the boy said nothing as he backed away bubbling his pet head apologetically what's your excuse surely you weren't born yesterday mr thief no of course not it was for research the boy protested what do you mean research he raised her voice harshly don't yell like that i'll tell you my friends and I are having an aviation club in town. We're trying to come up with a new way to find, or new ways to fly. Uh, right now, we're splitting three groups of research competition. One group is focusing on flying shoes, one is focusing on flying carpets, and the other is doing witches' brooms. So you're in a broom group? Kiki looked at him, looked at him in the eyes directly, and he blushed and nodded. That's why I was near your shop today. I heard you talking with the baker, and I rushed over to the beach to find you. Um, you wanted to fly with my brooms, huh? Well, it would never work out. Even with the broom, you would never be able to fly. I can because I'm a witch. In other words, your blood running through your ear is different. Kiki thumped her chest once. So your blood makes you fly? The boy's eye wide just looked at her. Ew, that's way weird way to say it. She burst out laughing without meaning to, then composed herself and murmured with a straight face. But I do wonder how it works. I can't, I don't know myself. She gazed up at the sky and cracked another smile. But the broom makes a difference. If you're going to do research, at least use a broom that's easy to fly with. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's dead. He's gone. No, he's fine. He's fine. Oh, they have an image of him. Um, it's no, it's no good. I made it. I try to make it look like yours, but it's awful. It hurts and jerks so much that my bottom hurts. If it were a horse, I would try to 
uh, rein in, rein it in, and I embarrassed my myself in front of people too. No, it's fine. It's fine. But but you know I'm just gonna chat, talk, murder, murder, murder. Everyone loves murder, including Kiki. Um, if it were hearse, hearse, I called it hearse. Wow, am I that Irish? If it were a horse, I would have tried to rein it in. The body threw. <laughs> <laughs> threw the body on the lake, never returning. This is like a weird Kiki's delivery service fanfic, like AU there. Uh, oh wow, you're getting notifications so late, am I? Oh. Why didn't you say that? Oh my god, oh my god, what's wrong? Uh... Whoa, you seem very amazed at something. I'm just gonna like, turn on my chat on my phone. Apparently there's no difference. Ooh, you, what's the problem? Why are you freaking out? <coughs> I don't know what's going on. Yeah, they're just dying a bit over there. It's okay. Um, uh, where was I? And I embarrassed myself for, oh, but it seems surprising. Yeah, it does seem surprising. And I embarrassed myself, but I embarrassed myself in front of people, too. Now uh, give me back my broom. Oh no, Kiki wailed and she saw her broom. Her mother's handmade lying on the ground, snapped in two. What will I do? She picked it up the pieces, she picked up the pieces and cradled them. Sorry, the boy plunged his head down in apology. In apology. This was my mum's broom, she gave it to me when I left home, and it was so easy to fly on, Kiki said, her voice full of tears. Sorry, the boy said again in a tiny voice. Then he stood up there with his shoulders slumped, hanging over his head. Oh well, Kiki finally said hoarsely. She might not have liked it, but there was nothing she could do about it. So she pushed, pushed the tears back, then threatened to overflow back down to her heart. It will make my, I'll make my own room. I've made them before, so I think it will work out. I doubt it will go as smoothly as the one right from the start, but I'll master it eventually. I typed them. Jesus' words. What? Currently drinking what CM is reading things I said after like ten minutes. CM is reading things I said like ten minutes after you see them. No, I'm not. Um, it's just that chat slow. That's probably it. Currently drinking kvass and eating sushi. There's love. I typed them. Jesus words. What what? You're so confused. I'm reading a book. <laughs> So, it, it, I don't, that's why maybe if I see them late, and that doesn't help that there's delay. What the hell? I just looked in the Discord right there. Discord general, and I just saw you strangling a cat. So, um, that's a bit sus. I'm gonna continue, if that's okay. The main part of this isn't just me, like... Like, if I don't respond, I'm very sorry. This is mostly just me reading anyway. That's the important part. If you can hear me reading, then it's fine. Um. Where is I? Really sus. What? Why are you so confused? What's happening? Just, uh, we're, re we're reading. Just gotta keep reading now. I'm sorry. Um. I've studied a lot about how to fly smoothly, but there might be ways I can help you, the boy offered timidly. I appreciate the thought, but this job is for a witch, said Kiki, proudly puffing out her chest. Being able to fly isn't always easy, huh? Yeah, although not being able to fly must be hard, too, Kiki said, finally smiling at him. Page turn. Oh, wow, we're at the end. Not of the book, but of the chapter. I did say I was going to read one more chapter. Uh, just before. The next chapter is called Kiki Gets a Little Irritated. Well, <laughs> that's the name of the next chapter, huh? We are on page 88, and about halfway through the book. I'm gonna end the stream there, because this is going on for way too long, man. It's been two hours. In 30 seconds, it would have been two hours. So thanks to everyone who watched this. That was really fun, actually. It was fun to me. I enjoyed it, and I'll be streaming. Have you got past? <laughs> have I gotten past page one? Um, nope, still on page one. Just a few like sentences in now. You enjoyed listening, great. 
I will be doing this again tomorrow. We'll get through another quarter of the book. So that's what we did every day. Yesterday we got through a quarter, today we got through a quarter. I think CM halfway done. You think I'm halfway done? <laughs> I think CM's halfway done. Uh, but he said that's quite some time ago. I am halfway done. I'm like just over, I think, halfway done. Well, I'll try to be there tomorrow. Thanks. If, if you can make it, that's great. If you can, it's fine. You can always watch it again after if you do, if you are interested in watching it. But yeah, no, that's that's that. Page eighty-eight. So yeah, about halfway through the book. Anyway, thank you, and I will see y'all tomorrow, probably, hopefully. No. What is Sleeping Prince doing? <laughs> What's going on? Maybe there's a lot of delay or something. Have you ever had kvass? It's good. Oh wow. I have to end the stream guys, I'm sorry. I keep going to end it and then phone says something. I'm like, oh. Something interesting's happening. What is it? Bye guys. <laughs> You'll never know, Sleeping Prince. Never know what it is since I'm ending the stream. Sorry. Bye! Bye bye. <laughs> Thank you.